We're the Indie Project, B and Theo, and we've been living and travelling the world in vans for the past six years. We're currently renovating an abandoned stone barn in Portugal to turn into a beautiful tiny home for us and our cats, Gingy Bear and Fernando. Follow our journey from the very beginning as we document the whole process of creating an off-grid home. Good morning guys, welcome back to a brand new video here from a sunny central Portugal on our property. We've got highs of 30 today. It is stunning, absolutely beautiful morning. Fernando's putting me off because he's just creeping <laughs> under the vehicle. But I've just been to the building yard and look what I picked up. I got four bags of lime ready to start the pointing on the gable end. Bee's garlic is just casually curing and drying out behind me on our clothing rack, but that is not why I'm standing here. I'm standing here because if you remember back to the last video, I built a frame that goes in here and I've now had time to go to the city and pick up the fixings that I need to secure this in place. So I'm currently just standing next to the wall that I'm going to be pointing later or at least making a start because pointing is a very slow process and I'm going to be using lime like I have for the rest of the project. It's really nice to work with but it's not great in really low temperatures or really high temperatures and especially not great when it's 30 degrees in direct sun but as soon as the sun has moved around the building and this is in the shade it's perfectly fine to work with. It means that it won't be as warm and also I can keep wetting the wall down and keep the lime moist so that it doesn't dry out too quickly because with lime you want it to dry out as slowly as possible. You got the metal ruler? Yeah, it's here. Right, so what we want is five. Because when you do the bottom, it's just going to swing. Of course. I'm going to do it all right. Yeah. What we could do is undo the clamp. Okay. Kind of push it in a bit. So. Okay. There you go. All right, that's all right. Let's wedge something under here to stop it from. How much, how big do you reckon you need a wedge for this? A wedge? Like, there should be some triangular wedges. That's pretty good. So I can go in five on this piece of wood? If that wood's 10 centimetres, yeah, I don't know how thick the wood is. 
was nine and a half. So you can go four and a half in. So I need to be like there. Eh? Probably about there. If you've got four and a half, then you can go in 2.25. That'll be halfway. So I've just fitted the self-drilling screws through the wood into the metal and we got a nice strong fixing and now we've just spent probably 5-10 minutes just making sure everything's perfectly aligned so when I screw in to the actual stone wall everything's perfect because basically we're trying to align with stone, we're trying to align with metal and when you're working with stone nothing's ever quite perfect because obviously you got indentations in the stone so where you take your level from is also really important but we're good to go now and i can drill into the stone and get these fixings in and then it's ready for the cladding how exciting the drill There you go. Oh, you need your tool belt. I do. So we just bring the final one in now. This drill is so loud. I don't even know if you'll be able to hear me. Leo's yeah, just hammering in the the sixth and final fixing, and it's all in place. It looks really good. I'm just envisioning it now when it's got the cladding on because it, it's. It's so funny, like when you That's see the so frame, solid. you can see how it's going to look and I can see it in my head with the cladding on, it's going to look absolutely lovely. Just like our toilet round there, somewhere behind me. So I'm now up on the scaffold and although there's still sun on the wall I'm not starting pointing just yet because the first step is to basically, it's called raking out, rake out any of the kind of old lime from when we were building this stone wall up. It wasn't necessarily pointed, it was just using the lime to bed the stones together as you're building. So now I can go back over and actually point it. But you can see when you're building your wedge stones in all different places under other stones to add integrity to the bigger stones. So there's a big stone here or down here there's a really big stone. So then you can see here I will have wedged three stones in here to keep the face of this stone level. So that's all set now. That stone's not going anywhere. So what I'm going to do is I'll keep the integrity of the stone and I'll just chip away the face so that I can basically point over. So it's doing its job keeping this stone in place and making the wall nice and strong, but I can point over it and make it really nice because these three stones here are so close together, you can't possibly point around that. There's just not enough space. So all I'm gonna do now, as you'll see, just chip away at this just a little bit. couple centimeters so I can get in there and basically point over the top of it so it looks much nicer and all it's very artistic like pointing this and that's why I really enjoy it because you can really kind of shape a wall of the style of how it's going to look and 
you kind of learn to be up close and look at stuff but then when you step back it can look entirely different so because I've got experience now I can look at this and say okay this stone here also needs to come out and when you step back it will just look really nice with the with the line of where you're following around the stone so I'm going to chip this one out a little bit here and all I'm using is a brick hammer and a chisel and it does the job perfectly really nice just chip away slowly you don't want to go too far but this means I can prep the whole area that I'm going to do today I can prep as I go along and any any loose bits I can find them and chip them out Whilst Theo's getting on with the pointing, I thought I'd tidy up from what we've been doing already this morning. He's put the hammer away, he's put the tools away, and then there's some wood on the floor and bits around here that I'm going to tidy up because they just don't need to be out. And it's so tempting when it's hot and sunny to just leave things to later when it's cooler, but it's not too bad today. I'm feeling quite refreshed after lunch, so I'm just going to get on and do it now. I've got the battery that he was using I'll go and put this on charge because you never know when you're gonna need it and the worst thing is when you go to use a tool and the battery is dead may as well nip that in the bud and charge it now blistering hot now but luckily the wall is in the shade so hopefully I won't be out in the sun for too long but I'm gonna mix up a batch of lime so I mix the lime for a good 15 minutes gets it nice and fluffy a really nice consistency for pointing there's so many different consistencies whether you're plastering you're rendering or you're pointing or you're building with it so yeah I'm gonna go for a nice fluffy smooth but not too wet thing to move is this ladder 
and a load of scrap bits of wood. Not all of it's scrap, there's quite a lot of good wood here, but then this short piece like that, we'll use those sometimes. These can be useful for props and things, so we don't throw them away or burn them, but we'll put them on the wood pile that's far away from here. So, although the wall is in the shade, I'm not in the shade just yet, so hopefully that will change soon because it's 30 degrees right now. It's very warm to be standing for hours and hours in the boiling sun, but I've got plenty of water. I just wanted to tell you guys the kind of tools that I'm using to point this wall. So, the main ones are your pointing keys. So, I've got a bigger pointing key, 14 mil, and I've got a smaller one. And the smaller one is amazing. If you don't have the smaller one, things can get a bit tricky because there can be small little areas where you just need to get in there. And with pointing, you want to avoid getting the mortar at all on the stone. So you just go in in between the gaps. If you start to get it on the stone, it starts to look really messy and not very, not very aesthetically pleasing. Another thing you can see down here, I've got, the square trowel. So this is good, you get different shapes and sizes of trowels, but this is really good because you can basically offer it up to kind of like the ledge of the stone. And then you can use that to push the mortar into the gaps. It really does work well. And yet again, it stops the mortar falling off and hitting the face of the stone. The most important thing to start with is water. So I've got a little little water bottle here that you just pump up and what I do now is I just spray in between all of the stones as much as possible try not to get it on the face of the stone again because if any more it does hit it it means that it will stick to the stone better which you don't want and obviously you want it to stick to the inside and the reason we're we're using lots of water in between the gaps is because with the lime what it will want to do is suck all the moisture out of the stone or the gap that you put it in, which will then mean it will shrink. So you wanna keep it basically, so it's, it's got enough moisture so it doesn't shrink and you don't have gaps within the gaps. And also then I've got a bigger spray bottle that I'll spray over the whole wall or the whole section of the wall that I've done probably today three times just to keep it wet, just to keep it uh, moist. And that means that you won't get any cracking either. So, you know, it's, it's quite a complex process to start with, but once you know how to do it, then it's just like clockwork. So I'm just gonna pump this up and start, turn this nozzle a bit and just spraying these gaps. And you don't wanna be, uh, stingy with this water because it's a warm day the wall and the mortar that you're spraying it onto will suck the moisture straight out of it anyway so you want to keep keep going ideally what i do usually if i'm plastering definitely do this but i spray down the wall completely drench it probably 15 minutes to half an hour before i actually plaster the wall with the pointing, it's not so important, but probably it's good to go over this 10, 15 minutes before and then go back over it just before you start pointing. Whilst Theo's pointing, I'll let the girlies out 
And when I say girlies, I mean the goats because the electric fencing still hasn't arrived. So we are having to play shepherd and shepherdess or... It's not actually that bad, I quite enjoy it. And they're very good goats. They follow us around and they're very chill. And it's nice when they come out and they run around and have a great time. So let's give them a little walk. I think they must be having a lazy day. It could be because of the heat. They're just completely uninterested in getting out, but I have only just opened the gate, so they might change their mind. They're all just hanging around in the shade here. They might come out when they see me leave. So I guess we shall see, give them a chance. So I've managed to get them to follow me up here, which is my favorite place because I can sit under the tree and they can eat all the brambles that are trying to grow back up around the barn and also stay in the shade because it is a warm day as we keep saying and we don't want them to get too hot and we don't want ourselves to get too hot whilst we're walking them as well. So this is a win-win situation. This really is the best spot to bring them to. <laughs> I can sit in this lovely chair and I'm just watching them, just eating the brambles, eating all the weeds that have grown up and it's perfect. And I can talk to Theo whilst he's pointing and just feel very relaxed. I know that a lot of people tell us that goats can be quite a handful. And I feel like we got really lucky with our four because they are super duper chill. So now I've finished brushing it all off, what I'm going to do is get my beast of a water pump and I'm just going to spray down all of the work that I've done today and just wet it right down and then I'll do it again once more later and that should be enough to stop it cracking and drying out. And then because it's in the shade, I mean, if it was in the sun, I'd have to spray it down constantly, which is a pain. So I'm happy that this wall is in the shade, but this is how I planned it. I'm always gonna leave this wall to later on in the year for when I didn't have to worry about rain because with lime as well, or any rendering or pointing, you don't want it to rain directly after you've just done it. So yeah, we're kind of like in really good conditions right now, but I'm just gonna spray it down and jobs are good. And might even spray myself down a little bit because it's so warm. Ah, why is the trigger not working? Ah, oh, that's actually so nice. I've just come down for the first time since I went up there. So I've not actually stood backwards and had a look. So I'm gonna have a look actually looks so nice uh, it looks really good it just ties it all together all of them stones with the pointing just brings it together and just looks amazing once this whole wall's done then i'm going to move on to the front wall but i've actually got some building to finish on the front wall so you'll get to see me building with stone and then pointing the front wall as well at some point but yeah i'm really really happy with that
It's another beautiful morning here in central Portugal on our property and I've got the enchada in my hand. I'm not gonna lie, yesterday was a long day and I'm feeling pretty knackered so I thought what should I do today in the hot sun? Do some digging, that seems sensible <laughs> but it needs doing. So what I'm gonna do is start work on our water lines and get in the water further up to this IBC tank that there you can see behind me and then we need to start digging all the way to the back of the house so throughout the summer we have nice running water that's the plan anyway one, I'm digging under a tree and it's a big tree with loads of like pine needles and stuff that have fallen down it's so nice to dig this area the soil you can see it it's just lovely this will be really nice to grow in and that is why we've gone for the raised bed and the holger culture method because it's the same principle everything just breaks down into the earth and it's just really nice for growing stuff now managed to dig about 10 meters all the way up to the IBC which is good and what I'm trying to achieve on the property is just to dig all of the water pipes into the ground it's a lot safer you see some farms and they leave them exposed on the top but here it's not the biggest place in the world we've got about five acres and I'm going to be driving a tractor over a lot of it especially with the uh, brush cutter the strimmer all of the different tools that I'm using on the land I need to make sure that I don't start ripping up the piping which causes issues later on with leaks and stuff like that so it's good to bury it all in. Now it goes all the way up here what we're going to do is tee off a little bit so we've got a kind of Y section that goes down to the tap where Bee's Garden is. just managed to cover all of the dirt over the pipes in the ditches and it looks so much better and I've got a couple of things that I need to get from the city some T pieces for the pipe some more piping but the pipe is actually going to run all the way along here and up past the house it's a long distance it's going to be sweaty work and I'm happy that I started early this morning doing that digging but most of it was actually under a tree so that was good I don't feel too overheated right now but I could definitely do with like a cold shower or something but I'm gonna try and find in the city and see if there's some sort of attachment for the tractor that I can use to kind of do the initial dig basically I don't want to plow I don't want to plow the whole thing I just want a small section that maybe I could run over with the tractor and just soften the earth a little bit so when I come in with the enchada it's a lot easier because the more we go up towards the house the more the ground gets solid and turns into stone hence why they built the house up there because there's just a massive foundation of stone underground So I've just had the strimmer out and I've been strimming various bits of the property and one of the areas I wanted to get strimmed and ready is our pool area. I know a lot of you guys have been asking in the comments 
where this has gone is it still here it's still here solid as a rock literally and it's so refreshing to come down and dunk in here for like 15 20 minutes throughout the day or we've got the option of having a cold shower straight from the well it's just perfect so one of the things we need to do is clean this out completely because it's not had any water in it for a long time we're not going to do that today i'm knackered we've already achieved a lot today so right now we're going to head to a river beach that we've never actually been to So we have just arrived at the river beach and we're pretty much the only people here which isn't a good sign there's also a tractor in the river and i can only imagine he's dredging it ready for when they dam it up and fill it full of water so we can swim in it we've never been here before but it's a beautiful spot there's some lovely trees loads of shade there's also a barbecue area over there with the toilet block i was going to say a shower block there's no showers that i can see but a toilet block and over the other side of the river there's also a really nice looking cafe and bar area i reckon this spot will do just here there's a nice little bench and we've brought a little picnic along and we can sit in the shade and enjoy ourselves i am a little bit gutted that it's closed i mean there is actually a bit of water in there that's very brown, very dirty and smells hideous. So if we were really desperate, I guess we could go in there, but we won't. So we're just gonna eat our food here. It is beautiful, like Theo said, it's a really lovely setting and there's a good breeze coming through. You can also park your camper van here. And I'm just, can't help, even though it's been years since we've been van lifers, can't help but think how epic it would be to stay here. It's such a lovely place. And if we were in our van, I know 100% we'd stay here. These smell amazing, by the way. Yeah, I'll have a couple of them. Mm, nice. <laughs> Cheers. So we've just had a nice little picnic sitting in the shade in a dappled sunlight under these trees it's a beautiful location we'll definitely come back when the river beach is full and usable but right now we're going to call that an end for this video we hope you enjoyed it and we'll catch you on the next one